The Invisible Man is directed by Lei Wan L. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and written by him as well. And this is the latest adaptation, loose. Uh, I would say, of H.G. Wells' classic novel of the same name. And in this movie, a woman named Cecilia, played by Elizabeth Moss, is running away from her abusive ex-husband. And she talks about how controlling and abusive he was, and how he would always know exactly what she was thinking, even if she wouldn't say it out loud, and she tried to do as much as she can without him knowing, even though it wouldn't get her too far. When she receives news that he has passed, however, due to an apparent suicide, he leaves a sizable amount of money for her. But even though he is now gone, she feels like he might still be around in some ways. And so the film becomes a sort of psychological thriller on whether he is still alive and hiding in plain sight, or if this is all going on in her head. Before I get into anything, I need to talk about the marketing for this film. The trailer, I do not like. I think this trailer gave away a lot of stuff in the movie. It doesn't give away thematic stuff as much as it gives away the way the plot progresses. And I was a little disappointed by that. I think one of the biggest issues with the trailer is that if you actually have seen it, you can sort of play out in your head what's the first act, second act, third act. But now let's talk more about the film. This film is two types of horror. There is the contemporary horror, there is the sort of creature feature, which is, is this thing real or is this thing not real, and the creepy imagery that comes along with it. But there's also social horror, there is the effect that abuse has on women, and it's a timely movie to have at this point in time. We'll talk more about that in a bit, because I really want to focus in on that later on. But first, let's talk about general feelings towards the film, what did I think of it. I love this movie. I think it's a wonderfully done horror film. Leigh Whannell has done a fantastic job, and Elizabeth Moss in this is magnificent. A lot of the film is her. She doesn't really leave the camera, and because of that, you're constantly in her headspace or out of it at times, and trying to see what's going on and trying to figure out things as she's trying to figure out things. Sometimes you're a step ahead of her, but the film intentionally does that because it's trying to show you that, yes, she should do this, but this is instead going to happen because past with him. And I think that fil the, the film handled that in a very smart way. It's actually quite rare. I haven't seen a lot of films do it like this before. I think that was a very great move. But Moss is so fucking good in this movie. She wonderfully captures the tragedy of this character. And I really felt for her the entire film. In the situations that she's placed in and when she is fearing for her life. I actually felt tension. I was constantly at the edge of my seat and I didn't want anything to happen to her. And as the film progresses and people around her think that she's seeing things and that somehow she is letting him control her from beyond the grave, I think that the film handled that in a very devastating way as well as in a very intense way. Now let's talk more about that because in that is the main part of the film, in my opinion. The real horror of the movie is dealing with that happening. Now. I'm not saying this as any sort of expert on sexual abuse or harassment claims or, or a Me Too expert, even though I fully support the movement. Of course I do. But at the same time, I think this film is a really good showcase of how awful actions like that can be and the stuff that it can do. Because she has a hard time even taking one foot out of the house that she's gone to. She's with her friend after she's escaped her ex-husband. She has a hard time even going to get mail because she thinks he might be out there. At one point in time, she tries to get mail. There's a jogger who goes by who is completely unrelated to her. And she runs back inside because she thinks it might be him coming to get her. And I found that to be a very... I found that to be very affecting. The film is very thematically rich in that regard to exploring the subject. And it makes it, like I said, very timely. I mentioned Harvey Weinstein's conviction a couple of days ago and I... I I mean, it's coincidentally that this film is coming out around when that just happened. But uh, at the same time, I mean, if you, if it's 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 tackled in a really great way. Narratively, I I'm not saying that I wanted to see more of the relationship breakdown, but it does not go too much into that. It's mostly dialogue in terms of the relationship fell apart. So 
I can see some people having some issues with that, like narratively, there should have been a little more lead up to it. But at the same time, the film straight up jumping into it isn't exactly an issue I have because I think I, I think it's it's implied. You don't need a whole setup to it. And besides, it's I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like that might be debatable. I feel like some people would say that, oh, wanted to see more of a build up to it, but I don't know. I, I really don't know on this one. But going back to the stuff in the film that also really works is the direction and writing by Lei Wan El. He's done a fantastic job. It's a very slow burn. This film is two hours long and it does feel like two hours, but I don't say that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. It's not like this film's ever going to lose you because it, it really doesn't. The screening I was at tonight, everybody was hooked to it. Except for this one person who was laughing in the corner. Did not like that person. But aside from that, everybody was hooked into it. And normally, when it comes to horror movie screenings, I'm always a little worried because there's always noisy people. And my It's chapter 2 screening, by the way. Worst screening I've ever been to. The, the people just won't shut up behind me. Thankfully, that did not happen this time. So, great job. Uh, thank you, audience. The film is also magnificently shot. Gorgeous cinematography. Editing, also really, really great and really strong. But the sound mixing, the score, is really something I really liked because there's a lot of sequences where it's very silent and there's a score or lack thereof throughout it and you're just following Moss as she's going from one part of this house to another and it's wonderfully executed. And I think the film excels at that really really well filmmaking all the aspects of it i would say this film really really nails that i do have one issue with the film though but i can't talk about it it's a spoiler so when you see it you'll know what i'm talking about but there's this one thing in the movie i was kind of like uh you didn't need that you didn't really have to do that um it was on and off it was on and off for me, but and I knew it was gonna play a big, a big role later on. But it just was like, all right. I mean, hmm. All that being said, The Invisible Man is still a really great film. It has a lot of great commentary, a lot of great horror, one really great performance from Elizabeth Moss. The supporting cast is also really, really great. Actually, everyone's done a great job. The direction and writing are great. Like I said, my issue really is this thing I can't really talk about, but it does, it's not like a deal breaker per se. It's, it's not like it destroys the movie in any way. The film is still very effective, and uh, I do recommend checking it out. I'm going to give The Invisible Man an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. I'll see you guys in the movies.